All right, guys, today we're going to talk about some crazy knife deals. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean some knives that are supremely cheap, that are really solid for primarily bushcrafting. You could probably flex some of these into survival if need be, but a lot of these are going to be very good, crazy knife deals for bushcrafting knives. So I think that these are all worth mentioning. And honestly, like I said, these are going to be like budget styled knives. If you are looking to either, you know, get into bushcrafting, these are solid picks. If you're looking to, you know, have a few extra kind of beaters for when you take people training or say you want to get your kids into outdoors bushcrafting wilderness living these are some really good knives to start off with these are just really solid knives that you can get without a lot of money and uh, that makes them very good for either like i said kind of disposable knives um, for bushcrafting or for knives if you're just looking to get into it once again i get a lot of comments especially because i do tend to show some more expensive and some very beautiful knives in my opinion on the channel and i definitely have some more you know expensive styled blades and so once again things like this you know um, bark river knives strike force 2 with its gorgeous you know burl handles is not something that everyone either really even wants or it's definitely not something that everyone can obtain so i try to you know show you guys and showcase some knives that are definitely far more obtainable now these guys these knives are not going to be as nice as that knife but these are far more attainable we're talking sub 50 dollars for all of them and sub 40 dollars sub 20 dollars for quite a few of them so anyways guys let's jump right into it with the mora eldris now i know i've been talking a bit about the mora eldris in quite a few videos here of late but i do think it's still a fantastic knife i've had this one for gosh nearly 10 years now and it's just it's a great knife i've had a handful of these over the course of my time and there's really nothing more to say eldrises are great now once again you have to know their limitations it's a very small knife it has like a two inch blade length but if you're looking for either a companion knife to pair with you know a larger knife or you're looking for a knife that's really going to be designated for carving specifically that's going to be a pretty solid pick all right the next two up are pretty similar to each other but enough different to warrant you know talking about them separately and this one of course is the more robust the newest kind of facelift of it and i think it's a really fantastic option you have a very nice rubberized handle for good grip and then you're dealing with about an eighth of an inch thick blade length made out of 1095 high carbon and overall like looking at this knife for its specs for what it's worth for its durability it's really a hard knife to go wrong with and once again the robust is about in a 15 to 18 dollar knife so it's once again very hard to go wrong with because of how cheap it is now there will be quite a few moras on this list because i think mora is one of the most high value brands out there so invariably if you are into bushcrafting and survival, you will probably pass over, at least encounter Mora in this line because Mora is just so synonymous with really quality budget wilderness blades so the next one up of course is the 511 once again this is a newer kind of facelift version to it i really do like these handles and i think it's worth saying whether you go with the robust or the 511 they have very prominent finger guards so once again if you're trying to get kids into this or younger less coordinated adults um, having that really prominent finger guard just adds that extra level of safety that in my opinion once again once you get more advanced you really don't need it but with less advanced less coordinated people it's a nice little stopgap to have. Now, if you are going to be training people and you are skilled yourself in bushcrafting and survival, I would recommend flattening the spine on either the Robust or the 511 because they are unfinished, so you can't really strike ferro rods with them. But of course, if you take a Dremel, you can fix that in about 30 minutes or less. So anyways, the 511 and the Robust are very solid knives and they are really good um, entry level point or entry points. The 511 you can get for about 11 bucks to 12 bucks. So really hard to beat. Now the next one up, and I swear, promise the last Mora, I know the last three have been Moras, so this is the fourth Mora on the list, but the Mora Clipper has made a kind of resurgence in 20, late 2023 and of course now into 20. 24. I've talked about the Clipper in many videos, so I won't talk about it too much, but I do think the Clipper is one of the best Moras value-wise for bushcrafting. So you get this very nice, very large rubberized handle with the diamond texturing on there, and it's super comfortable. You don't have the in my opinion annoying finger guard on there so you can do things like chest levers a lot more it kind of allows you a little bit more of an advanced you know kind of um, handle and ergonomics and then of course you have 
and the 1095 high carbon steel blade on there with a nice Scandinavian grind. Now, next one up is, and the reason why I chose to talk about the clipper slash companion last, is we're gonna be talking about the next knife, and this is the BPS. Um, I'm not quite sure what they call this, but this is a BPS knives blade, and this thing looks pretty much exactly like a Mora clipper. It is very similar in handle and ergonomics in blade shape in you know, Scandi grind, all of that. This is BPS's clone. Now, why would you choose BPS's clone over the original uh, Mora clipper or companion? So there's a few reasons. First off, for a lot of my guys, I know you like having full tang blades. And so this one also has a full tang blade. This one is also closer to an eighth of an inch thick. So if you want that thicker, more, more robust styled thickness, there is that. In addition to, this does not have an unfinished spine, so you can strike ferro rods with it out of box. Aside from that, the other cool thing about this is with a handful of discounts offered on Amazon, and I'll leave the link in the description below so you guys can check it out, you can get this thing for sub $20. Like I think I paid like, I wanna say it was like $18 for this, so a little bit more than an $11 clipper, but when you compare it, once again, full tang, eighth of an inch thick blade, you are getting, at least in those regards, in toughness regards, a better knife. Now the catch, there's always a catch, right? Um, the catch to this one is that it is in 1066 high carbon. So we're dealing with a lower carbon content in this, which means that it is going to need to be resharpened more hypothetically than a 1095 blade. So you're going to have less edge retention, but you are going to have a blade that should be more shock resistant and a little bit more, um, yeah, just overall shock resistant, tough. So it will be less prone to breaking, but 1095 really isn't that prone to breaking either. In addition to that, you do have nice wood handles, nicely kind of chamfered. Uh, it's overall a comfortable knife. And then they give you a leather sheath. Not the best leather sheath, but I do like how this leather sheath very similarly can easily adapt to being a neck knife because I do like how you can easily adapt a clipper or companion to being a neck knife as well. So very easy to adapt it to being a neck knife if you want to run it that style. But overall for the package for sub $20, like this is just hard to beat if you are really sold on having a full tang. Now, like I've said in previous videos, I'm not convinced that you need a full tang knife for realistic durability, for max durability, like absolutely taking these two knives to their breaking point. Yes, the full tang will last longer, but you know, for realistic wilderness use, like this blade is, you know, sub four inches or right around four inches, if I have to say, okay. Yeah, it's like 3.9 inches, right? So it's just under four inches. And so you're not going to be like batoning down a redwood tree with this. You know, you're not going to be batoning batoning down some large hickory or oak tree with this knife. So in my opinion, you don't need the maximum strength out of a knife that's never going to see that, you know? So anyways, my opinion, it's a little bit arbitrary, but I want to make it an option out there because it is a truly valiant option for what it is. Now, last one up on the list is going to be the Condor Pterosaur. The Pterosaur is the most expensive one on this list, but I think it offers good value because once again, if you like full tangs, this is a full tang knife. Um, it is a fully plastic handle, so it's going to be a little bit more temperature neutral than you know the wood full tang of this um, knife. You do also have a sharpened spine out of box, and once again, you're dealing with 1095 high carbon in an eighth inch thick piece of steel. Now, in my kind of opinion, this is what makes the BPS such a value is like I said, this is like an $18 knife versus around a $45 knife. And outside of this being 1095 versus the 1066, this is everything that this is realistically, the full tang, the, you know, um, sharpened out of the box or sharpened spine out of box, the uh, Scandi grind, very similar knife, but this one, of course, is in a little bit of a better steel, so you will get better edge retention, which still makes it a very good value, in my opinion. And when you realistically look at the Pterosaur, this is everything that the Mora Garberg is, but for about $27 cheaper. So in my opinion, or maybe it's like 22 actually, but about $20 cheaper. And so that's why this one is on the list. It still is very good because even the Garberg itself, like it's kind of crazy to think of how good we have it off here. But you know, even this guy, like this is $67. So roughly speaking, this is even a better option than other 
um, bushcrafting knives out there too. So we won't go down the rabbit hole. We won't talk about the Garberg anymore, but that's why I think some of these are really, really compelling offerings for what they are. So anyways, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been educational. Hopefully you've seen some knives here that you haven't seen previously. So what I try to do with these videos is make it like something that you guys haven't seen, try to introduce new options that are very budget oriented. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video as always. God bless and I'm out.